In this video, we are going to explore a mobilization and muscle energy technique to correct anterior innominate rotation. This technique aims at correcting the bony alignment of an anteriorly rotated innominate. This is done by having the patient isometrically contract the hamstrings and gluteus maximus while the therapist provides a counterforce. The force created by the muscles helps pull the pelvis posteriorly and correct the misalignment. The therapist then provides a posterior rotation force to further mobilize the affected anominate. Mobilization grades 1 through 4 can be utilized. A grade 1 mobilization is used to relieve pain and uses small amplitude at the beginning of the available range of motion. A grade 2 mobilization is also used for pain relief, but it uses a large amplitude at the beginning to mid range of motion. A grade 3 mobilization is used to improve mobility. It uses a large amplitude from mid to end range of motion. A grade 4 mobilization is also used to improve mobility, however it uses a small amplitude at the end range of motion. Some of the tissues stressed with this technique are the hip flexors, erector spinae, hip extensors, and the joint capsule. Indications for using this technique are Upon palpation, the PSAS is found to be more superior and less prominent, while the ASAS can be found to be more inferior and more prominent on the involved side. Also, the involved sulcus presents more shallow upon palpation. When comparing leg length, the medial malleolus on the involved side may be inferior, presenting as a longer leg on that side. An anterior-posterior compression test may be restricted on the involved side. Lastly, a positive standing or sitting flexion test on the involved side may be found. Absolute contraindications for this technique include unstable fractures, an acute musculoskeletal injury, and osteoporosis. A relative contraindication for this technique includes pregnancy. Expected treatment outcomes include decrease in pain, relief of symptoms, symmetrical landmarks found through palpation and observation, increased iliosacral mobility, and increased range of motion of the hip and lumbar spine. The treatment steps are as follows. First, the patient should be positioned in sideline on their uninvolved side with their involved side up while facing the therapist. Next, while keeping the bottom leg straight, flex their knee and hip of the affected side into resistance. The patient submaximally contracts their hip extensors for five to seven seconds while the therapist creates a counterforce. This produces a posterior rotation force on the anominate. The physical therapist then places their hands on the affected side's ASAS and ischial tuberosity and performs a posterior rotation mobilization on the anominate for 15 to 30 seconds. This should be repeated three to five times or per patient tolerance. After the technique is complete, bony landmarks, symptoms, and SI special tests should be reassessed. Expected tissue changes on the involved side are lengthened hip flexors and erector spinae, strengthened hip extensors, and a loosened joint capsule. Functional improvements for the patient is an increase in pain-free range of motion. Treatment application for pain relief is a 5 to 7 second isometric contraction of the hip extensors, followed by a 15 to 30 second grade 1 or grade 2 mobilization. This should be carried out 3 to 5 times. The same procedure applies for increasing mobility, except a grade 3 or 4 mobilization should be utilized. Here's a list of references we used to create this video. Next, we are going to give an example of a physical therapist and patient interaction using the mobilization with muscle energy technique. Okay, Alex, so after assessing your hips a little bit, we saw they were a little uneven. So we're gonna try and correct that, try and bring them level again. We're gonna do that using a technique called muscle energy. And what that means is you're gonna use your muscles a little bit, and I'm gonna be pushing on the bone a little just to make it level. Um, so why don't you go ahead and lie on your right side, facing this way. I apologize if my hands are cold. 
Um, bottom leg is perfect. I'm gonna take your top leg and just bend it right here. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna be right up against your leg, just like that, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do, not, not quite yet, is you're going to push against me using your glute muscles, okay? Mm -hmm. What that's gonna do is, if you think about your, your top bone right here, it's tilted this way, we're gonna try and tilt it back this way. And your glutes are gonna help do that. Okay. Okay? So, when you push against me, I don't want you to do as hard as you can, think maybe 75%. Okay, so my hands are gonna be on the hip bone as well. And after you're done pushing against me, I'm gonna give it a little bit extra push, okay? Sounds good. If anything hurts, let me know. It shouldn't, it should be just fine, but let me know, okay? okay? So I'm gonna place my hands here. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and push against me? Perfect, relax. So we're gonna do that two more times. Go ahead and push against me again. And relax. Still feeling okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No pain or anything? No pain. Okay, last one. Go ahead and push against me. So just to kind of assess, make sure that everything is level again, I'm going to have you stand up. And why don't you go ahead and face that way? This way? Yeah. So if you could, maybe just lift up your shirt a little bit. I'm going to feel your hip bones mm -hmm. just to make sure everything's level. How, how are you feeling right now? Good. Um, feels a lot less stiff. Good. Everything looks level. And I think we're good. 